Amen. Well, as you're seated, the children can be dismissed to their classes this morning. Uh, I want to invite you to open your Bibles to the book of Proverbs. We're going to be all over uh, the book of Proverbs this morning. Um, instead of just looking at one passage, what I wanted to do was build on uh, Daniel's wonderful foundation that he laid last week, laying out our humble pursuit of wisdom as a, as a loving relationship between us and the Father rooted in the fear of the Lord, the right understanding of who God is and who we are. And that's the beginning of living the way that God's called us to live, to learn and live on God's path of wisdom starts with the fear of the Lord. So we're gonna build on that foundation. And because of kind of how we've scheduled things out, the next couple of weeks, we're gonna really focus on our Pray, Give, Go um, initiative here. So those sermons will be specifically geared towards that. And so as we wrap up kind of Proverbs and take a break from wisdom literature, what I wanted to do was see that that wisdom uh, in, in God's word is not just this far off like mystical concept. It's a practical skill that God gives his people and has called his people to. And, and in fact, what I want to propose to you this morning is that our world needs Christian wisdom, maybe now more than ever. There is so much going on in our world that we need wisdom to, to handle. And, and we need more than just uh, simple answers to complex and deep questions. Even I was thinking this morning about it being Father's Day. And, you know, I, I was such a good dad before I had kids, uh, Chad. I knew it all. And, and then I had kids and I was like, okay, all these, all these steps to figuring this thing out, man, it's a little, it's a little deeper than just seeing and viewing God's word as a three-step process to do anything that I wanna do. We believe in God's word and we are convinced of the truth of God's word and it's power to, to work itself out in our lives. And yet in God's love and sovereignty, he has called us to use wisdom to learn how to answer the questions of our day and our context in our world. You see, if there was just one easy set for every question, it would be very difficult for there to be any differences in cultures and ideas and backgrounds and those sorts of things. And, and the complex world problems that we face today, we know that, that there's not just an easy page to open up to your Bible and figure out the, the right answer every time. And so God has given us wisdom and I wonder if, if we understand how deeply the world needs Christian wisdom as a witness to our neighbors and our family and our loved ones. And I, I thought about this week and I thought about being a dad. Do you need wisdom to be a dad? Absolutely. But then I thought about some questions that I might ask this room and I'm gonna ask you to refrain from, from saying out loud, but I thought about some questions that might really just make your skin crawl. And for the purpose of showing you how deeply we need wisdom. So I'm going to ask these questions. I'm going to ask that you refrain from shouting out, no matter how badly you may want to. But these are kind of questions that you're faced in your life that you need wisdom for. And so I'm going to start just right off the bat. Who should you vote for? Okay, so people's faces got a little, like, even at that point, and that was like the lightest of the questions I'm about to ask you. So what do you think about Disney and the way that they're putting things that don't align with the Bible's view of sexuality in their movies for your children to watch. Should you watch them? Should you not watch them? What do you think about gun control? That's when people really got nervous right there, that one. As we know, because it's the world that we live in. And, and there's all these questions. What about abortion and same-sex marriage? And what about the politicization of everything that we do, that even the, the issues that we have with violence in our country and, and with the way that people are taking lives and, and not having any kind of care for one another, that it immediately can't even be a human problem because five minutes after the problem, it becomes a political issue that you have to take sides on. Do we need wisdom? <laughs> Does the world need to see a church that is wise? about how we deal with these things. I propose to you this morning that we do, and Proverbs is wonderful for teaching us what wisdom looks like. And Daniel, as I said, did a wonderful job laying the foundation last week. What I wanna do this week is put some adjectives to go with wisdom that, that are kind of like hyperlinks throughout the book of Proverbs. And they are big words, big root words that link big themes so that we can see wisdom, not just as this, like I said, far off mystical concept, but as this skill that we can walk in and live and develop. And so what I'm gonna invite you to do is uh, we're gonna pray and then we're gonna jump into these three 
kind of dimensions of wisdom together and talk about what it looks like in our lives and talk about how our testimony to the world around us can be the wisdom of Christ and can really make a difference. So let's pray together. Father, as we come to your word, we know that there's a lot of questions out there, serious questions. Even, Lord, we kind of joke about our unwillingness and the the awkwardness that it makes us feel to have to have those conversations, but they're real questions. Lord, they're questions that the world around us is asking. They're questions that we're asking. And Lord, we want to be able to testify to the goodness of the gospel and the truth of your word, but we wanna do it in such a way as that it's done according to your path of wisdom that you've called us to. And so I pray this morning that you would teach us that we would learn and live the gospel out through learning more what it means to walk according to biblical wisdom. And I pray this in Jesus' precious name, amen. So three three major things I'm gonna share with you this morning and then I will invite the praise team back. But the first one is, is this, wisdom is the skill to keep hearing. Wisdom is the skill to keep hearing. If you know anything about the Old Testament or even Jewish religion or much at all about the Bible itself, you know that one of the primary words that is important to the Old Testament Israelites' covenant and relationship to God is this word, hear. And in the original Hebrew root word is, is shema. And it's where you hear the shema is something that's repeated in Jewish life all the time. And it's, it's this, hear, O Israel, The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, mind, whatever you have left over, and then love your neighbor as yourself. That's the foundational core of God's covenant and law with Israel is that this is who God is and this is who we're called to be. And and it's where we get that word. Shema is the Hebrew root word here that is 30 times used in the book of Proverbs here. And, and, And so Part of the dynamic skill of wisdom is for us to use the skill to keep on hearing. Now, here's what's important. That, that word means more than just to have information come through your ears and into your brain and then back out, right? We know as, uh, as husbands and wives or anybody who's been in a relationship with other people, you know that there's a difference between hearing and listening, right? <laughs> like you may have heard your wife say something sometimes, but you may not have listened well enough to, to apply it. And this word here in the book of Proverbs means much more than just to let information pass through your mind. It means to grab a hold of it. And, and throughout the book of Proverbs, Solomon, as he's the kingly father teaching his son the way of wisdom, using the collection of wisdom from hundreds of years of Israel's history, he keeps using that word, listen, you want to be wise, hear. I want to read a couple of these verses, a couple of the 30 times that this word is used to you. I'm not sure if it's on the screen or not, but like I said, I'm going to be bouncing around, so just bear with me. But first, as Daniel said in Proverbs 1.5 last week, let the wise hear and increase in learning. Proverbs 8.33, hear instruction and be wise. A direct link, a direct connection between your ability to hear and process and your ability to be wise. Proverbs 15, 31, the ear that listens to life-giving reproof will dwell among the wise. Proverbs 23, 19, hear my son and be wise and direct your heart in the way. And then the last one I wanna show you here of those 30 is Proverbs 28, 9, which says, if one turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. Did you hear that? A refusal to listen to truth that comes from God might in fact disqualify your prayer connection between the Lord. And it makes sense, right? If you refuse to listen to the God who has all wisdom and you only tell him what you know and refuse to listen to what he has to say, you see that there's a disconnect in in what you may confess and what you actually believe. Hearing is vital to our life as believers, and it's not just in the Old Testament book of Proverbs. We get to the New Testament, and we'll talk about this more, but Jesus is the very wisdom of God. Jesus is called the wisdom of God who becomes flesh and dwells among us. He perfectly embodies the book of Proverbs, all the wisdom literature, Ecclesiastes, Job, Song of Solomon, all the Psalms we've been talking about. Jesus is the perfect picture of it. And in his perfect picture, something happens in his life. 
we were reading this story recently in our family worship and it's the story of the transfiguration where Jesus goes on the mountain with his closest disciples and they see Moses and Elijah and, and Jesus is transfigured, his glory shown before the face. And then the father's voice, he comes out and he says something and what does he say? He says, this is my son, listen to him. Listening is the first humble listening, like Daniel said last week, is a huge key to us understanding what it means to be a disciple. One of my favorite things that Jesus does in the New Testament as he's teaching parables and tough kingdom truths and sayings and things that, that really divide the crowds and divide the peoples in Jesus' day, he, he'll finish a sermon and he'll say, let anyone who has ears hear. What is Jesus doing? Does he not know that everybody there heard what he said on his Sermon on the Mount? Is he saying, oh, you need to be better listening, you know, put your phone down or whatever? No, like they didn't have phones, obviously. Uh, but, but he's not saying you need to pay a little. He's saying there's a difference between the spiritual ability to hear someone's words and the gift that comes from God to truly have your ear turn to the heart of God and hear what Jesus is saying. Now, the disciples didn't always get it, right? Often in the New Testament, Jesus would say something, and then he would say, hey, let anybody who has ears, let them hear. And then you see in just a few verses, the disciples are like, by the way, Jesus, we don't understand what you're talking about. Can you help us out? We don't, we don't really get it. And yet, what's the key to their discipleship? They keep on hearing. In fact, as we sang, none but Jesus, like I have no one else. There's, there's a time in which Jesus says some things that everybody else runs away. And his disciples, Jesus looks at his disciples, he's like, are you going to leave too? And they say like, where else are we going to go? We believe, even if we can't grasp in this moment everything that you're teaching us, we believe that we're called to keep listening to you and keep listening to you, and keep listening to you. And so what Daniel was saying last week is so huge to our understanding of what it actually means to be wise. Are we able to listen to the voice of the Lord in a spirit of humility? Part of, I believe, our issue in failing to be a wise church and failing to be wise believers is that we believe we've heard it all. <laughs> We've heard all the podcasts, we've heard all the sermons, we've heard all what people might say to us in a small group or in one-on-one -on -one coffee counseling and, and those sorts of things. And we've convinced ourselves that I don't need to listen anymore because I've heard it all. Proverbs says, you wanna be wise, you better learn to keep hearing and keep hearing and keep listening and keep listening. This lifelong pursuit of wisdom is a lifelong exercise in hearing from God. So number one, wisdom is the skill to keep hearing, but then added to that skill is the skill to keep understanding. And this is where it's important for us to understand because discipleship is progressive. There are times when we say, Jesus, I don't understand what you're saying, but I wanna keep listening. I wanna keep hearing, I wanna keep following. And, and, and the reason we do that is we believe that Jesus' wisdom leads us from just hearing into greater understanding. Throughout the book of Proverbs, what, what the author of Proverbs does is he uses this term that's translated understanding or perceiving or even sometimes like the intelligence of the heart to explain to us that wisdom is not void of knowledge, but it is more than just head knowledge. It is the ability to really process and chew on what you've heard, what you've seen, and, and to really understand. Let me show you in the text. It's important for us to see God's word speak here, but Proverbs 2, 4 and 5 says this, if you seek it, speaking of wisdom, like silver, and search for it as hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. It's not a perpetual ignorance that God calls us to. We're called to be understanding. Proverbs 17, 24, same root word, but this time it's translated discerning. The discerning or understanding sets their face toward wisdom, for the eyes of the fool are on the ends of the earth. Proverbs 18, 15, the intelligent heart inquire, acquires knowledge. The ear of the wise seeks knowledge. Same root word there that's translated this time, the intelligent heart. And then finally, Proverbs 28, 5, evil men do not understand justice, but those who seek the Lord understand it completely. 
This word is important for us to understand what the author of Proverbs is trying to do and teach us what it means to be wise. We're called to move just from the information that we might store into our head, and we're called to be able to process that, to understand it, to perceive it, to see it for what it is, and then to let it work itself out in our everyday lives. And so as much as the church, sometimes we fail to be wise because we fail to be right hearing disciples, Sometimes we fail because we haven't really understood, kind of tongue in cheek there, we haven't really understood what it means to understand. In many ways, what we've done is we've elevated head knowledge. We've elevated uh, really how much quantity of information you know about God or theology of these things. And so what we say maturity looks like and growth looks like and, and discipleship looks like is all about how, how the quantity of information that you can obtain. The problem is not with the information itself, it's that all that information is screaming to us that this information is no good if it's not understood and applied. And yet we have so much of the church where people come to ask those hard questions that we asked this morning and our answers are like, uh, let, me, let me go back into the, to the wealth of knowledge and yet knowledge that doesn't understand. You say, where are you going with this, Jesus? Let me, let me help you with this. What if, one of Jesus' biggest issues with the, with the religious leaders of his day was that they, ha- it wasn't that they didn't have all the knowledge, It's that they didn't seem to be able to process it through a spiritual heart and apply it to what true and and really following the Lord looked like. And so kind of to connect this to the New Testament, this idea in John chapter three, you guys remember John three, it's one of the most famous books, chapters in the whole Bible. It's where we get John 3, 16, huge. But before we get to John 3, 16, Jesus is having this conversation with this guy named Nicodemus. And we're told that Nicodemus is a teacher He is a leader of the people of Israel. He has the head knowledge, right? He's been affirmed as a leader of the people. If if people are asking these hard questions of life, they're asking it to Nicodemus. And Nicodemus comes to Jesus in the dark, kind of stealth mode. And he says, Jesus, we know. He says, we know in our head that you are from God. We know because you couldn't do all this stuff. Let's be honest. You couldn't do all this stuff if you weren't from God. And I love what Jesus does because Jesus, you know, Jesus is always just super polite and kind and like, well, thank you for that, Nicodemus. No. He's like, you know, Nicodemus, it seems like you want to get into the kingdom. Uh, But for you to get in the kingdom, you need to be born again. And this perplexes Nicodemus. Jesus says you need to be born of the spirit and you need God to do something in your life and your heart that you can't do on your own. That's the only way to see the kingdom. And, And Nicodemus is like, how can a grown man go back into his mother and be born again? And, and Jesus says maybe one of the funniest things in all of the New Testament, it may not be funny to us, but I think is I live with people who love sarcasm. And so if you read it through the lens of sarcasm, it, it's a little funny because Jesus looks at Nicodemus and says, are you a teacher of the law? <laughs> and, and like when you see what Jesus is doing, he's saying, you're a teacher, Nicodemus? And this is exactly what it says in our English translations. You're a teacher of the law, but you don't understand. It's the word that Jesus uses. It says, Nicodemus, you have all the power, position, you can have all the theology, all the training, but there's something that you miss. You miss what it means to process and understand the heart of the Lord through the lens of who I am. And if you wanna get into the kingdom, that's the only way to do it. You need understanding. Brothers and sisters, our neighbors need to see believers who understand and who are not just hearing truth on Sunday mornings and reading and and just filling our heads with it. This is important. A pursuit of knowledge is all through the book of Proverbs. It's all through Jesus' teaching in the whole Bible. He tells us to pursue the knowledge of God. There's nothing wrong with that, but the, the right knowledge of God is a knowledge of God that leads us to understand. And that leads us to the last thing I wanna share Wisdom is not just the skill to hear and keep on hearing or the skill to understand and keep on understanding. It's the skill to keep doing kindness and justice. And as I looked at this, these are two words that go together. And there's another word, righteousness, in the original language that could be paired with these. 
But as I was studying the book of Proverbs, what blew me away and amazed me was that Proverbs and all of Old Testament literature on wisdom and, and seemingly what we'll see is Jesus has no category for wise people who don't love God and love their neighbor. Like the very like basic standard for wisdom, according to what we're about to see in Proverbs is that you know how to do kindness and do justice. You wanna be wise, these, these loving our neighbor things are intimately connected with what it means to be wise. And so let's look here at God's word. First of all, this word kindness is, is it's, I'm gonna butcher it. I told Daniel this week, we practiced our Hebrew. I caught him and ran over, it's, it's hasad. And I can't even say it right, because you really need in the back of your throat this hasad. But this word is a word that in the Old Testament, God uses to describe who he is. And we translate it loving kindness, we translate it faithful, we translate it kindness, but it, it needs so many adjectives. This is a word that if you read the Old Testament, you'll see it needs so many different adjectives for us to understand it. But what it basically boils down to, if you study the word, is acts of kindness towards those who don't deserve it. This is who God is. This is who he tells Moses that he is. I am the God of hasad, of kindness, of love to those who do not necessarily deserve it, but I, that is my character. I do it anyway, and I call those who follow me to practice kindness that same way. And so this is what Proverbs says in Proverbs 3.3, 3, let not steadfast love, hasad, and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Proverbs 16, six, by steadfast love and faithfulness, iniquity is atoned for. It's a huge verse. We could talk for hours about that, but, but you see here the connection between the steadfast love that originates in who God is and, and how that ought to work itself out in the lives of every believer, every person who wants to live wisely. Not only is this word kindness throughout, about 10 times in the book of Proverbs, when you add it with the word justice, you see that word's used about 20 times. And, and Proverbs talks a lot about justice. Proverbs 1.3 says, to receive instruction in wise dealing, in righteousness, justice, and equity. Daniel hit on that last week. Proverbs 18.5, it is not good to be partial to the wicked or deprive the righteous of justice. Back to Proverbs 28, 5, evil men do not understand justice, but those who seek the Lord understand it completely. I remember talking about kindness and justice in another sermon I preached as a younger pastor, um, preacher, and I, I was preaching this sermon and a guy pulled me to the side after the sermon and said, Jared, you're a really good you're a really good young preacher. Your, your content was very good. You're good looking. He didn't say that. I was making that up, but... But then he said, but you can't talk about justice. And this is the reason he gave me. He said, that is a Democrat word. And that's what he said. He said, justice is a left-wing word and we cannot talk about it in God's house. And I, and I looked at him and then I had this problem where I looked back at my Bible. <laughs> and, and the very core of who God is, is this word to, do, to make right decision. Now, let me say this, that justice may have been just as triggering as any of those questions that we ordered before, but Proverbs says, evil men do not understand justice, so we should not be surprised that the world doesn't, can't get its hands on what true and real justice really means. We should be surprised by that. Left, right, wherever, the world's not gonna come up with the right answer, but look at the rest of what it says. But those who seek the Lord understand it completely. And yet, it seems like in our churches where we're full of head knowledge and full of the ability to define and look at all these words and see how many times the word justice is used in the Old Testament and the New Testament, it seems like so often what gets thrown at the church is you know, you say you know so much about God and yet you seem to know so little about loving your neighbor and about passionately doing this kind of kindness that's, that's more than just Southern hospitality. It's more than just holding the door open for people. It is a kindness towards those who can't pay it back. That is who God is. And if you're in this room this morning and if you're in Christ, 
God has done hasad to you. He has given you a kindness that you did not deserve and you cannot pay back. And he caused you to follow in his footsteps. And, 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 and as Christians, the cross is the reason that those who follow the Lord understand justice completely. When you get to the New Testament, the cross is the reason that 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 statement can be so true in the Bible that those who follow Jesus ought to understand justice because we understand that the justice we deserve, Jesus took on the cross and instead gave us grace, kindness, and mercy, and yet he calls us to go and sin no more and to love our neighbor and to care for the poor to care for the widow and the orphan and to continue doing those things. And so here's what I wanna share with you this morning. We're not talking about work salvation. We're not talking, what we're talking about is if you begin where Daniel told us to begin last week with the fear of the Lord, understanding who God is, who we are, and understanding what that relationship ought to look like in Christ, if that's where we start, then Jesus gives us the gift of his spirit and his wisdom, and he calls us to reflect his character. And so what that means is we're not, we're not doing kindness and justice and seeking that because we're earning our, our favor with God. We're doing that because we believe that this is what God has done for us, and the wise way to live life according to God's word, which is a testimony to God's character, God's personhood, that we are called to be people who love kindness, walk humbly with our God, and do justice. Now, obviously, wisdom tells us that that, that's going to look different in our different lives. And that we can, even as believers, have wise disagreements about what justice ought to look like. But what we cannot do is excuse ourselves for something that the Bible calls us to do just because it might have been hijacked by the culture. Instead, we're called to say, hey, by the way, the God who created kindness and justice, he gets to define what kindness and justice is. And he calls us to walk on that path. And so I wanna invite the praise team back, but here's where I kind of want to wrap all this up. We need the skill to hear and keep on hearing and understand and keep on understanding, but we need to develop and work on the skill to keep doing kindness and loving mercy. And it's, it's vital Here's what happens in the New Testament. I want to wrap it up back with the person who exhibits the wisest counsel and wisdom that can ever go. Jesus keeps running into people who claim to be wise according to the scriptures. They claim to be wise according to the Old Testament. No, we know the law. Our father is David. We have the market cornered on what it means to be wise. And this is what Jesus says about the people who filled their lives with head knowledge but cannot love their neighbor. Matthew 23, 23, Jesus says, woe to you scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you tithe mint and dill and cumin, and you have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faithfulness. These you ought to have done without neglecting the others. What we talk a lot about at Tapestry is a balanced understanding of who God is and what the gospel means for our lives. There's so much testimony out in the world right now of an unbalanced gospel, of those who want to be hearers only and fill their heads with knowledge, but never let it practically impact their lives. And on the flip side, those who wanna just do, 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 but they wanna be void of of real foundational knowledge of who God is and, and how he's called us to live out his word. My challenge to us at Tapestry is that we would live the wise balance, the wise balance of recognizing both the truth and grace in Jesus Christ. That we would recognize the wise balance of both being able to say, we are people who love God's word. Like Tapestry, I pray that we're a people that people say when they come to our church, that's a people who love to drink God's word in, but they are also a people who love to do kindness, Hassad, and they love to do justice. And they love to show how God is not just the God who rescues us intellectually, he's the God who rescues our whole person and calls us to be on mission, as we're gonna talk about the next couple of weeks, doing kindness and justice according to his word. And so let me pray for us this morning. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that you have given us the book of Proverbs And Lord, I I feel like I've done it no justice uh, this morning to how much wisdom is there, Lord. And so I pray that your people would dive even deeper into the 
study of what it means to be wise, what it means to be kind, what it means to be just, Lord. Lord, there, there are questions that we don't, get, we don't get to go prepare for every day, Lord. The questions that have met us this week, the questions that are gonna meet us this upcoming week. Lord, the world is out there and, and they're desperate for people who can live wisely, both in truth and love, both, both in knowledge and kindness. Lord, make us that. Lord, help us not to bow to what the world around us says is, is right, but to know that, Lord, you are the only one who've laid out the path to what's true and what's right, and you have the answers. So help us run to you, Father. Lord, I pray for this congregation. I pray that we would individually and collectively be a testimony of the balanced gospel to the world around us. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Will you stand?